Yo, what's good, fam? Welcome back to another episode. Let's hop right into it. So if LA couldn't get any creepier with all the problems with crime and homeless, I ran into this billboard on this lot. So this is a vacant lot for construction. And it says, live life deeper. 144 stories underground. You may never go outside again. It's so creepy. I'm wanting to know if this is real with this construction site right here. West Hollywood, Beverly Hills adjacent. A controlled access community. 24-7 security, residents only amenities, a new standard of sustainable living, but it's all underground. Live life deeper. The world's first and only completely subterranean residences. Terrifying. I feel like it's a horror movie. It's so creepy. That's actually pretty cool. I'd want to see like a whole lot more about that. Real. Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to Psychoset. Can I answer any questions? What is it all about? Well, we're a company that produces 100% organic human sleeves. You're probably wondering what's a human sleeve. Well, if you gather around, I can let you know what we do here in full details. So here at Psychoset, we've been able to achieve true immortality by taking your human consciousness and storing it on a device called a portable stack planted in the base of your neck and it collects and stores everything that makes you you. Every memory, every emotion, every sensation, everything you've ever experienced gets stored on this little device. You can see it here on the screen that's about to come up. You guys just follow me. All the information is stored on this device and can be digitally transferred from one sleeve that you currently occupy and to the sleeve of your choosing. Sleeves are basically human bodies we grow in our lab. They're organically real. Bones, tissue, organ, everything. These are the best bodies you'll ever have, period. Nothing can hurt these bodies, but they are human. So if something were to happen to them, you can always change them out for a new one. That's why it says immortality becomes non-existent. Because you can be 50 in one body and change to the next body. You're as young as you feel. If you come this way, David's going to show you some 2018 models that you can choose from. Well, okay, you can choose which sleeve you desire. Now you can either have the sleeve that you have right now, or we have a selection of wonderful sleeves that we have made through Psychosec, fully genuine and organic produce. Now if you'd like to be taller, shorter, skinnier, if you'd like to have better vision, maybe strength in your body, you have the choice to choose a man or a woman's sleeve. Now if your sleeve becomes damaged or too old for your liking, Simply remove from the cortical stack your DHF, your consciousness, to another, newer sleeve. <laughs> yeah, that ain't real. That's an ad for a TV show on Netflix. June 20th, 2024. <laughs> I know I'm a little slow, but that's on an airplane. It's not a rocket. Maybe the dragons have been released. Somebody pissed off Godzilla. I don't know. What the hell is this? Whatever it is, it's shaking my house. I don't know. That would be kind of scary to like wake up and your house is vibrating and then you hear that sound in the sky i don't know that i believe it but i don't know why here we come anonakuli makawani and owner nanalula what hawaii hawaii what about hawaii mo who's going to hawaii am i going to hawaii stop saying hawaii in there <laughs> erected a massive concave reflective surface. It will focus the sun's beam in a deadly ray.
First off, I'd like to thank the good people at Chan Jin Smelting and Mining and Donuts and Tops for neutralizing our wonderful, deadly new lard lad. <laughs> I don't know. The Simpsons just seems to keep predicting, like, everything. <laughs> at this point, are we really surprised? Everything blue. Lahaina burning down. A lot of things that are blue, for some reason, stood the test of the fire. The blue boat was the boat that survived. You got this blue car, and these homes had blue in it. I mean, it gets weird. This is the home from Hurricane Dora that survived, and the owner name was Dora. Got a little blue car right there. You'll see a lot of this blue imagery. This is what's interesting. There's this laser, and it only catches fire to other colors, but not blue. So I had to look it up, and it's because it's a blue laser. It's a blue laser, and that's why it didn't burn the blue. First, you got this little turquoise-type blue house, but here's another blue house. This one's painted blue. This is blue, and it survived. Here alone, you can see the blue and red, but you can see a lot of different blue that survived. Right here, blue survived it. The cloth, the boat that survived in the ocean, and these are all just the mainstream articles showing this. The boat was blue. The car that survived, right, it's still blue. And the, I mean, this is what they showed in the, the mainstream news. And shout out to my friend, Dana. She pointed this out. This is pattern recognition. And all the people that they show after the devastation are wearing blue. This is where it got weird. And it kind of took a turn for me where I'm like, there's some type of color symbolism happening here. This fire right here, this blue survived it, cut it off from the blue. Right here where the 47 trunk banyan tree survived. You got this like little blue house restroom that survived. Here's ABC News, the guy in the blue. This girl cleaning is wearing the blue. Good morning America, this guy's wearing the blue. Just weird, symbolism, burnt, but this guy's carrying something blue. So everybody that they're showing in these pictures are wearing blue, so some sort of code. It's some sort of, I, I don't know what it is. This house, they're showing this in CNN, the blue house over the fire. The sugar cane, this guy looking at it, wearing the blue. I mean, it just, it goes on and on. This guy, New York Times, he's wearing the blue. This guy laying down on the blue chair. It does go into the color spectrum as we did a video on the purple lights, the purple blue lights that are popping up everywhere. The blue light, you got a Blu-ray disc because the blue holds the most information through this light spectrum. And we've covered the optogenetics, how certain lights can put you under mind control. But the color blue is used in a lot of elite logos because it makes you trust. It's I trust you, in a sense. Politicians usually wear blue suits, so you will trust them. You always see politician wearing a blue suit. This all goes into mind control. And let's not forget about the most, the, this blue mask right here. The blue street lights popping up, the blue and purple street lights, Project Blue Bird, which was a mind control operation. Project Blue Bird, Twitter's the blue bird, but Project Blue Beam, that's probably the most important of all this. Using lasers, Project Blue Beam, Blue Beam lasers, to create holograms. All the blue and this being blue should say enough about that there's something going on with the blue logo. Here's the blue logo. Here's the blue logo. Here's the blue logo. Here's the blue logo. That's pretty crazy. We better keep moving. Uh, I don't want to like disappear or something. Man shines a light at a UFO and you'll never guess what happens next. The man made a detour at Sentinel, Arizona rest stop. He observed several UFO in the distance. He decided to shine his light at them. You're not going to believe it, but it looks like the UFOs began to communicate with him. So let's analyze the footage. Whoa, look at those guys. What in the fuck? Oh my God. Hmm. Holy shit, dude. Oh my God. Dude, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. People are trying to say the UFO was a drone, but here's the thing, when you look at Google Maps, he was in the middle of nowhere. Which means it's unlikely that anyone was out there with the drone. Not to mention, the object had instantaneous acceleration, which civilian drones just don't have. Unfortunately, the incidents that took place that night remain unsolved. Huh. I don't know, that was pretty cool, but still, it could have been drones. I don't know, what do you guys think? Not as an expert, but as a concerned citizen. One of the 400,000 people who marched in the streets of New York on Sunday. And the billions of others around the world who want to solve our climate crisis. As an actor, I pretend for a living. I play fictitious characters, often solving fictitious problems. 
I believe that mankind has looked at climate change in that same way, as if it were a fiction. As if pretending that climate change wasn't real would somehow make it go away. But I think we all know better than that now. <laughs> I don't know, man. How do we know anything we see on the TV is real anymore? Like, what? Can a laser cause property damage from a satellite in space? Let's say on a small island in the Pacific. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It was like a little laser gun. What do you guys think about all that? I mean, to be totally frank, um, almost every conspiracy theory that people had about Twitter turned out to be true. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, if, is there a conspiracy theory about Twitter that didn't turn out to be true? Uh, so far, they've all turned out to be true. And if not, uh, more true than people thought. I don't know. I think uh, when he got Twitter, he fired a whole bunch of people because he was really unhappy with what he saw. I don't really know too much about it other than that. The Simpsons predictions, or should we say plans for 2023, are downright chilling? In an episode from 1998, the show hinted at an economic crisis, nuclear war, and the death of the leader of the United States, all happening in the same year. The episode in question, titled Bart to the Future, shows a glimpse into the future where Lisa Simpson has become the President of the United States. In a conversation with her staff, Lisa mentions the previous administration headed by President Biden, left behind a budget crunch and quite a bit of a mess. Later in the episode, a news broadcast reports on a nuclear skirmish with an unspecified country leading to mass destruction and chaos. While the idea of a nuclear war and economic crisis is frightening enough. Of course, we can only hope that these predictions from The Simpsons do not come true. But it's hard to ignore the show's track record of foreseeing major events, making us wonder what else they might have predicted for the future. To unlock secrets of humanity. Like I said, like, are we really surprised with The Simpsons at this point? I often joke that you've probably actually met undercover officers and never known it. Oh, for sure. In your yeah. everyday life, just walking through the yep. grocery store or the mall or whatever else. They estimate there are 100,000 undercover officers inside the United States at any given time. That almost seems low. It's <laughs> almost. It, well, it's <laughs> also the unclassified number, right? The odds of you crossing paths with one of them at some point is scarily high. Whether you're standing in line at Target or Walmart, because guess where they shop. Whether you're visiting a national park and they're taking the picture right beside you or whatever it might be. You're going on a cruise and they're on the cruise ship with their family too. It's just amazing how close it's been. And that's not even counting all the people out there who have stories about grandparents and aunts and uncles who nobody really knows what they did and maybe they did this or that. It's fascinating how we're all just a few steps removed from truly undercover work. I believe it. I worked at a game store when I was a teenager and uh, there was a guy that used to come in and he'd pay for everything in a bag full of money and he was like always dressed in black wearing gloves and stuff he would never tell us what he did but he would like buy a hundred games at a time every time he would come it's crazy there's no question about the fact that mockingbird is real it started out paying journalists in major media's pulitzer prize winning journalists to print fake stories uh, that the CIA wanted in the press and fake interviews. And this was revealed in the church committee. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? We do have people who submit pieces 
two other two American journals. And of course, then the CIA destroyed the rest of the files, which is what they do. George H.W. Bush came out and finally made the statement about Mockingbird. Well, we're going to officially stop the Mockingbird program. The CIA will no longer pay journalists to write stories. From now on, the program is voluntary, which means Mockingbird continues today. When's the last time you've seen a mainstream media outlet do a serious investigative report on the actions of the CIA? There's a reason for that. This would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country. And we're looking at that very carefully. You say that continues today? Well, I, yeah, I would think probably for a reporter it would continue today, but because of all of the revelations of the period of the 1970s, uh, it seems to me that a reporter's got to be much more circumspect in doing it now, or he runs the risk of uh, at least being looked at with considerable disfavor by the public. I think you've got to be much more careful about it. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Yeah. M moving on. But the legend is that Jackie Gleason and Nixon were drinking and that Nixon said, you want to see some fucking aliens? And they get on Air Force One and they fly to some Air Force base and they go to a place where they have a crashed UFO and they have biological beings that are in freezers. And Jackie Gleason sees this. And Jackie Gleason, after that, has a house built in upstate New York that looks like a UFO. He became obsessed with UFOs after that. There was a house, it was actually for sale at one point in time. Yeah, so he has this house that he had shaped like a UFO. And this is like, who knows if this is a true story, yeah. right? Because it's like, it was kind of sort of disputed. His ex-wife told the story or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys know about that? Leave some comments. Okay, I get it. I get some tension in the room. Let's just address it. Why the hell did they get me to host this thing? No, I'm serious. I'm serious. Biggest night in sports. They couldn't go out and get Kevin Hart. Matt Damon, Christoph Porzingis. Instead, they hand it to a guy who spends most of his life in jean shorts and is actually proud of it. Why? Why did they go get a guy from the redheaded stepchild of sport and entertainment? Why did ESPN get a host from the WWE? I mean, it's rigged. Did I just spoil the surprise for some of the people? It's scripted entertainment. What we do is fake, right? So I know what you're thinking. Me hosting the SPs, that's crazy. Or is it genius? It's time to take a look at yourself, sports, and realize that you're more like the WWE than you have ever imagined. I'm gonna start with the NBA. <clears throat> Cleveland won something. That's actually impossible. There is no way that that wasn't scripted. Especially when you look at the whole story. Okay, LeBron. You used to be a good guy. And then you turned into a bad guy. And now you're a good guy again? And you left the NBA hanging. What are they going to do when they don't have a bad guy? Exactly what we do. They're going to make a new one. <laughs> My hat's off to football, though. They build characters. Odell Beckham Jr. Hell, he already looks like a WWE superstar. He is one parrot away from being Coco Beware. <laughs> but I will admit, here is the one place that the WWE has you beat the one thing we have that you don't. Vince McMahon. A maniacal billionaire pulling the strings behind the scenes who uses every trick in the book to manipulate things to his advantage any way he can. 
something like that, that is way too crazy for real sports. <laughs> or maybe we have more in common than you think. <laughs> do y'all think he was joking or do y'all think he was being for real? <laughs> Oh my word. More Simpsons. Well, that can't be good, guys. We are learning new details tonight about suspected directed energy microwave attacks targeting CIA officers and top national security officials. We first started hearing about them, and we told you about them here on Special Report in 2016, shortly after then-President Obama opened the embassy in Havana, Cuba. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon has the latest tonight about a suspected attack here at home. U.S. officials say there are now 130 suspected victims, mostly CIA operatives and U.S. diplomats, being treated for brain injuries, debilitating headaches and vertigo, the targets they believe of a directed energy microwave weapon. There's a mysterious direct energy weapon that is being used, and it is causing, in some cases, permanent traumatic brain injury. New indications suggest the incidents go as far back as 1996. Two individuals working on the NSC believe they were targeted in 2019 and in 2020, just after the election. One was near the White House and one was walking her dog. The Russians have been working on mobile microwave weapons for years. We have to get more information and we got to tell the public what's going on. The U.S. Air Force and tech firm Epirus have developed a mobile high-energy microwave weapon to bring down drugs. Drones. Epirus is also working on a miniature variant of the weapon that can be easily transported on a pickup truck. This is the type of technology that might be targeting American diplomats. Russia certainly has the means and the motive to conduct these attacks. I mean, there's some, some evidence out there that certainly points to Vladimir Putin, the KGB operative in the Kremlin, being responsible. The only victim so far to come forward, former CIA head of the Europe desk, Mark Polymeropoulos, was targeted while visiting Moscow four years ago and forced to retire. It's pretty insidious because it also doesn't leave any kind of, you know, open open scars or, or, or wounds. Mark lobbied for treatment at Walter Reed's National Center for the Intrepid. As part of his therapy, he painted this mask of a Superman cape with a broken CIA shield with an arrow through it to symbolize the moral injury he felt when at first he was not believed by the CIA. The CIA is now taking the issue seriously, but without the actual weapon, U.S. officials don't know who to blame and how to stop these alleged attacks. Brett? Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you. We'll continue to follow this one. We all know that direct energy weapons exist. I mean, there's patents for it and everything. There's articles about it. Shit. Congress even has stuff up on Congress websites about it. So... Go look into that.
Like I was just saying, y'all. Dome. Israel's Iron Dome is a short-range air defense system. It is designed to intercept rockets, artillery and mortars. The system has been in use since 2011 and has helped reduce casualties from rocket attacks against Israeli cities. The Iron Dome depends on a system of radar and analysis to depend whether the incoming rocket is of threat or not. Then it fires an interceptor only if the incoming rocket risks hitting a populated area or an important infrastructure there. It works alongside two other defense systems, David Sling and Arrow Interceptors, which are in place to counter medium and long-range threats, including planes, drones, rockets and missiles. The interceptors of the system are fired vertically, either from mobile units or a static launch site, they detonate the incoming rocket in the air, producing the explosions in the... That's pretty cool little defense system, though. Looks cool when it's being used. 2010. You're watching a short-range ballistic missile target being destroyed by a high-energy laser mounted on a modified Boeing 747, while both are in flight. The Missile Defense Agency's airborne laser test bed reportedly carries a megawatt-class high-power chemical oxygen iodine laser that's coupled with precision pointing and atmospheric correction equipment, and it is now proven capable of knocking a ballistic missile out of the sky. Onboard sensors detect the boosting missile, track it, compensate for atmospheric disturbances, and then blast the target with the laser heating the boosting ballistic missile to critical structural failure. The entire event, from launch to target destruction, took less than two minutes in the test. The system is the result of a cooperative effort led by Boeing, in partnership with Northrop Grumman, which supplies the laser, and Lockheed Martin, which is developing the fire control system. The aim is to deter enemy missile attacks by disabling the attacking missiles while they are in the boost phase. That means hitting a target capable of 4,000 miles per hour with a beam of light traveling somewhere close to 670 million miles per hour. As you can see from this cockpit camera view, the relative motion can seem quite small. The U.S. Missile Defense Agency hopes similar devices will one day be capable of tracking and attacking multiple targets at a range of hundreds of kilometers at a lower cost than current technologies. There seems to be a huge emphasis on ensuring that the media and anyone else can't see what's going on here in Lahaina, West Maui. There are miles and miles of this black fence going up that was not here before that is obscuring ground zero and making sure no one can see what's going on inside of there from the road. No one can get in there. No one can take any pictures. And then I've also seen these weird foreign police cars showing up, these special police, what I, I'm not sure what to call them. This is a Nissan, but there's quite a large presence of these standing guard around the perimeter. We've also lost our ability to fly drones really anywhere near this area. Now this 20 second clip here that I, I tried to get out of my car and show what was going on, I was almost immediately after these 20 seconds, National Guard came, chased me off, yelled at me, told me to get back in my car and keep moving. So you cannot pull over, you can't even stop your car anywhere near any of this anymore. Now I'm going to show you a fairly long clip that shows just the how extensive the fencing is on the western side of the main highway here. And there also is National Guard, regular police, and what I have dubbed special police, which are these police cars that are foreign made, uh, the people that are driving them are not, they don't look like any police I've ever seen in the United States, so kind of a bizarre situation, but they have all, they have a, a huge presence standing guard 
ensuring that nothing can be documented. You can't stop your car. You can't pull over. You can't fly a drone. You can't take a picture. You can't get in anywhere near any of this, which is part of what makes the footage that I have so unique. Now, I always make sure to point out that the footage that I have has been uploaded to the mainland to multiple people. They have the credentials to my social media. So if anything does happen to me, it's not going to prevent the story getting out. But the footage I have both uh, on the ground and, uh, in, and drone, but particularly on the ground, is not going to be able to be reproduced with the amount of resources they have put into locking this area down. Now, I am working on another video now that's going to show side by side this same drive a week ago so you guys can compare the, you know, what it's like now and you can see just the amount of fencing, rocks, police, barricades. Yo, that's pretty crazy that they're doing that. They're trying to make it to where nobody can see what's going on. That's pretty crazy. So also in the foray of directed energy weapons. What is that? Uh, the ability to, let's just say, throw your voice into your head or my voice into my head or allowing algorithms that now they can blanket a whole geographical area and they can make everybody change their thoughts. They can, I, I use the term intrusive thoughts. Um, back to that fork in the road analogy. If you find yourself where you have to make a decision about something, next thing you know, you catch yourself kind of having an argument in your head with your own voices. Well, the ability to um, add another one of your voices in there, but have it controlled by somebody else's microphone, so to say, is a very powerful tool. And I think this is a weapon of war that we are seeing happen to everyone around us. The Department of Defense recently started initiating protocols for their employees, their agents, to discuss Havana syndrome, Havana syndrome-like symptoms. And on that list is that their agents are hearing voices in their head. And this is what they're getting at. This is that technology that, you know, next thing you know, you're trying to make a decision, but there's another Sean in your head that now is actually somebody else's control. And through the manipulation of that voice, they can now push you just like we have, you know, the cell phones are weaponized now, the social media platforms, and they can engage with an algorithm and they know that they can push you in a direction by repetitive information being displayed in front of you. That is wild. Pooey. All right, guys. So that's another video. I hope you all have a good day. Take it easy.